Hi everyone, I'm Rachel Tessman from StampYourArtOut.com. We are here for another live paper crafting class. If you are on Facebook with me at this very moment, you are going to be in the live broadcast um, with any comments that you post, that kind of thing. They don't get shared when I post the, the feed to YouTube, but if you're watching this later on on YouTube um, and you're interacting with me and I'm not responding, it could be that it's because I recorded it first on Facebook. Anyways, <laughs> I have a very fun project to share with you today. Um, and uh, I wanna mention something before we get started and before I show you the project. But this is super cute. I'm gonna refresh my screen really quick too to make sure that I am actually on my, um, on my Facebook page broadcasting with you all. Hopefully you are joining in with me. Uh, I'm not seeing any comments yet. Maybe it's not working. <laughs> We can try this again, certainly, um, but I'm just going to keep talking as if it's working. And I think it is. Okay, so I want to tell you that your comments, which I'm not seeing for some reason, um, that's okay. Maybe I'll just have to look at my computer. But if I don't respond to your comments during the live broadcast, um, it's because I'm not very good at it, for one thing. And also <laughs> because um, I can't see them. But I'm, I'm so into the moment of making what I want to make for you that I don't look up at my screens too often. But I promise you that I will go back and read comments um, afterwards and I'll respond to any questions that you may have or anything like that. If I just click like on your comment, please know that it's because I'm trying to save time, but I'm reading through all your comments after the broadcast anyways. Um, and I, I greatly appreciate those comments. So, all right, so who do we have on live with me? I'm gonna, I'm going to uh, turn down the sound on my actual computer here and see, oh yeah, there we go. <laughs> I can see comments on my computer. I just can't see them on my iPad, which is where my camera is. So forgive me if I don't catch your comments during the broadcast. Rhonda's saying, so far, so good. Hey, Lucy's here from Quebec. Thank you, you guys. Okay, this actually might work better because I am looking down at my computer closer to where I'm gonna be um, demonstrating. It might work out great. So I've also done kind of like a little test. Um, I have tracked time and how much time it takes me to respond to everybody's comments. I like to respond to everyone's comments because I so greatly appreciate that you are on live with me during this and that you're, you're asking questions, you're sharing where you're from. Um, I'm a people person and so to me if I don't comment back it really makes me feel empty. Um, but I'm going <laughs> to tell you that it takes a few hours to do so. So I'm this time around I'm going to resist commenting after everyone's comments. And I'm just gonna click like and love and <laughs> ha ha ha. Um, but I will respond to ones that have questions. Time is precious, isn't it? Okay, so thank you. And if you are commenting, if you are sharing and telling me that you are sharing this video, your comments get you entered into a prize drawing. So you'll want to be doing that um, for the sake of getting entered into that prize drawing. We got some cute prizes at the end of this today. Today is a monster box. Oh my gosh, look at this. So hopefully, yeah, you can see him. Isn't this cute? I say him, I always call monsters him, but this one has a bow, so I'm thinking it's a girl. And look at that, it has teeth on it, and when you open it up, it has a treat inside. So I'm gonna share with you how to make this. It's actually pretty simple. Um, it just takes some measurement uh, knowledge. You have to know how to use a ruler. <laughs> and when I'm done with this, um, I will post this video, I'll post measurements, I'll show a visual of the actual measurements on my blog, and I'm hoping and planning for Saturday morning. So if you want to come back to my blog, um, let's see if I can post that up here. I'm going to just uh, hang on a minute. I want to make sure I'm on the right spot. Okay, so this is my blog, stampyourartout.com. You can see it up here, stampyourartout.com. When you're in here, this is the home page, and you can see there's a little menu up here. You can either click blog here, that will take you to the blog, or you can scroll down, there's a button here that says blog, or at the very bottom, you'll be able to see my latest blog posts. These are the last three that I did, and you can just click on the one that shows the monster box when you get there, okay? All right, 
So I think we are ready to roll. I'm gonna start with measurements um, because measurements are always great to see right away so you can kind of get a feel for how you would cut your own supplies. And I wanna talk about some of those supplies as well. So let's click back over to the computer. All right, so here we go. We have um, the Share What You Love designer paper. Normally you would use cardstock for this, but um, the Share What You Love designer paper is stiffer than most designer paper. So you can see um, that uh, you're gonna be cutting it so to a fun size. It's 11 and a half by seven and a half. And then we're gonna be scoring it so that you have little square areas, two and a half inches um, square all the way around that piece until you get to the end, but I'll show you that in a minute. But two and a half, five and a half, and that's gonna be parallel to the long edge. And then you're gonna go at those same marks. So two and a half plus another two and a half is five. Did I say five and a half here? Sorry, back up. Two and a half, five, and then down here again, two and a half, five, seven and a half, ten. Those are at every two and a half inches you're gonna score, okay? But you'll also wanna cut and score at the same time. Those, that's a big, big thing that you'll wanna watch in this video so that you can make this box really easily. Um, we're gonna use some shimmery white, some basic black, and some metallic edge ribbon for the accent pieces. And over here you can see the supplies. Um, the main supply that you will need right away is the trimmer bone folder, tear and tape adhesive, and snips. And then we're also gonna be using snail adhesive for some of the things that we don't need a real strong adhesive on. Um, pencil ruler. Uh, I'm using a stamp set to help accent the box. It's called Takeout Treats, and it is not available yet. It's in the holiday catalog. And then we have um, the Jet Black Stays On ink to go with that. Watercolor pencils. We have two different packs right now. Um, I'm using the first pack, which is available in the main annual catalog. And then I'll be using a few punches and some glue dots. All right, so are we ready? I'm, just, I'm so excited, this is such a cute box. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and get my screens ready on the computer. Oops, let's see if I can do this uh, picture in picture thing. I have to use some little, little tricks here, you guys. Hang on, hang on, I forgot to set that up. There we go. Okay, so here we go, we're gonna move this over and we are ready to roll. Here's the box. I'm gonna close out something on my computer so that when we come back to it, we are at the right spot. Okay, isn't he just so cute? Or she? <laughs> All right, this is what you do. You're gonna take a sheet of that lovely designer paper and you can see already as I share with you all of these beautiful, beautiful papers that there's a shimmer to them. Okay, so some of them, I should say four sheets have a shimmer, kind of a pearlized look to them. Um, there are three floral sides that do, or two floral sheets that do not, but the rest of them do. And then on the back side, we have, <laughs> we have some printed paper that's a little less pizzazzy, but better if you're going to put designer paper onto a card and you don't want it to be too distracting. Hey, Twyla's here. I love it, you guys. This is so fun that you, I haven't broadcasted in, I think, a month. This is so hard for me. I'm, I'm nervous. <laughs> I'm excited. Anyways, so I'm so glad to see some of the names of people that I haven't seen in a long time. It's so glad to see that you're back. And Sandy, thank you, Sandy. Hi, Sandy, how are you? Okay, we're gonna move that aside and we're gonna pull out one of those sheets. Okay, the next thing that we're gonna do is we're gonna do some fun cutting. This is where you really wanna pay attention. Um, I'm gonna flip it over this way. I think it's gonna be easier without all the distracting beautiful flowers. Okay, let's cut our paper now and we're gonna cut it to seven and a half. It is pretty paper, isn't it, Kim? By 11 and a half. It's hard to cut it, but if you don't cut it, you're not gonna use it. <laughs> right? So true, huh? Okay, so now we're gonna score, and we're gonna start with the first score lines that I mentioned in the measurement page. So we're gonna go to the two and a half inch mark. Hopefully you can see that in the screen, it looks like you can. And we're gonna score parallel to the long edge, two and a half inches there. I'm gonna crease that just a little bit harder. And then we're gonna move to the five inch mark, and we're going to score again. Make sure everything is where it needs to be and we'll score again. All right, now we're gonna flip it this way. <laughs> Thanks, Deborah. You know what, it's been a month. It's so hard. And 
but I, I feel like I'm talking too much. But anyways, yeah, I'm a little nervous today for some reason. Two and a half inches in, and then five inches in. The more often I do this, the um, easier it is, I think. So if you, um, if you catch me at a nervous time, it's because I haven't broadcasted in so long. Okay, there's seven and a half inches, and then we're gonna move it all the way to the 10 and a half inch, I'm sorry, 10 inch mark, the 10 inch mark. And I'm gonna zoom in. Oh, you can see it there, the 10 inch mark right there. And that will leave us one and a half inches on this end, which we need um, because we're going to have to make the mouth part right here, right? And we don't want it to go too far down. So it's okay that our designer paper is not more than 12 inches, okay? So now we'll flip it. Oh, no, nope, now we're not gonna flip it. We're gonna bring it back in like this and we're going to cut. So after we've scored, you're gonna come back in and you're gonna use your cutting blade um, thank you, Linda, for sharing. <laughs> Thanks, Melissa. Okay, we're gonna cut now, and I'm gonna bring in some white paper so you can read the marks on here. We're gonna cut at five down and at two and a half up. So hopefully you can see that with the white paper underneath. Um, five inches, you're gonna press it down and you're gonna slice downward, and then we're gonna press it at two and a half and slice it up. So let's move that sheet out of the way. Now you're not, not gonna be able to see these as well because this paper is pretty busy, but I'm lifting up the arm of the paper trimmer and then I'm pressing it down and slicing. And we're gonna do that three times. So we'll bring it to the five inch mark again. We've already scored and now we're gonna come in and do our five inch mark and our two and a half inch up. And then we'll bring it to seven and a half inches and again, we've already scored. So we're gonna bring it to the five inch and slice down, two and a half and slice up. Now on this last score line, you're not gonna do that because our cut is gonna be a little bit different. Instead, we're gonna pull it out of here and we're gonna grab our, sorry, I'm grabbing my scissors. We're gonna grab a long handled scissors. I think it's easier with a long handled scissors. And we're gonna do some bending because we're gonna have to bend it into a box anyways, but this will make it easier to see those score lines that we have here. And we're going to trim in a different direction. So here you can see where all the cuts are going into the side of the box, right? Okay, now on this score line here, this last one, Instead of cutting here, we're gonna keep those two together and we're gonna slice into this direction. And you could use a paper snips too, but I really think having a long handled scissors for this is very, very helpful. Um, we don't sell a long handled scissors right now. Hopefully you own one. Um, but when we do the diagonal cut, cause you're gonna do a, do a diagonal one too by hand, it's gonna be easier with a long handled scissors. Okay, now we're gonna take a ruler Oh, not yet. Now we have to do some more slicing. So we're gonna bring back our paper trimmer and we're going to bring in our paper this way so that these, this section here is up at the top. Good morning, Vicki from Minnesota. <laughs> Thanks for joining. Okay, so now what we're gonna do is we're gonna bring our paper in here so that what we're, we're trying to achieve um, a one and a half by one and a half inch square piece up here. So you can see, if we just lift up this piece, you can see it's at the one and a half inch mark and we can slice here. But if you wanna know the measurements, you're gonna to go to the six and a half inch mark out here, okay? So we're gonna start where um, this gets sliced here and we're gonna move all the way from there up to the top, okay? So that is at the four inch mark, lots of measurements on this you guys, and we're gonna slice all of this off, okay? Now to make it easier, just flip it over and do the same thing. Adjust that so that it's at the one and a half inch mark, and then we're going to see that that is at the five and a half inch mark over here, but this is what we wanna slice off. We wanna slice from here to here, okay? So position it at the four inch mark again and slice. 
Now we can bring our ruler and pencil in. We can get rid of that. Actually, save that because you can use that later on. <laughs> on something, right? Okay. So now we've got all our cuts except for one. We need a diagonal cut right in here. So we're going to take our pencil and our ruler, and we're going to go from this little section here where it's scored and meets the outside edge with this corner here. So connecting that to that. And I think it helps to do a ruler line before you cut. You could aim it and just hope for the best, but, <laughs> but sometimes it's good to, uh, you know, make it straight. There we go. Okay, so we have two diagonal lines in there. Hopefully you can see them. There's one there and there's one over there. And now we'll come in with that long handled scissors again. Hey, Carrie from Michigan and Sandy from Wisconsin is here. Thank you for sharing, Sandy. Okay, so now we're gonna slice from there. Make sure I have it in the right spot, yep. From there, all the way down to that spot and you can just take that out of there. You don't need that. And then from here, all the way to there. Save those pieces too. Those are good. <laughs> You're gonna need them for something. All right, we're ready to put tape on. The taping part takes a while. You can still see all this, right? Okay, the taping part takes a while, but it's important. I'm gonna grab my cheat piece over here because the cheating piece, um, which I'm gonna pull out and uh, grab soon, um, has all the tape on it already. So keep your box um, open towards you so that you see the inside of the box if you're using a designer paper. If you're gonna be using cardstock, it really doesn't matter because it's the same on both sides, right? And it's a symmetrical um, design. So decide what the inside of the paper is, or the box is gonna be and start cutting and putting tear and tape. Or, you know, if you like to tear the tear and tape because you can, See, it works to tear it too. <laughs> I just forget to. And sometimes I tear it when it's on my actual um, project. And then I tear it weird. For some reason, I always pick up little bits of cardstock on the paper, like it tears the paper. I don't know. But yes, you can tear the tape. That's why it's called tear and tape. You're gonna put this tear and tape all the way around on three sides of your of your designer paper squares here. One square, two square, three squares, four squares. Okay, so you're gonna do those outside ones and leave these all blank. And then you're gonna flip it over and you're going to put tear and tape. Oh, there's a, a few more cuts. These cuts will help you. They're not necessary, but um, I think you should do them anyways. This is just to kind of um, make it so that when you put these things in, together as a box lid. You're not seeing cardstock, extra cardstock come out the bottom. So what I'm doing is I'm just kind of angle cutting here and here. Someone called it mitering. I thought that was kind of cool. I don't know. I'm not a, I'm not a woodworker or anything, but mitering sounds like a great word. Let's call it mitering. You're mitering those corners and that way when you tuck them in for the lid, you're not gonna have that extra stuff come through. It's not gonna be bunching up towards the top. Okay, so this is where you put the last couple pieces of your um, tear and tape. And yes, I cut the tear and tape adhesive again. I cut it, sorry, you don't need to do that. Just tear it. Okay, so here is our piece, the way it should look. We've got our tear and tape on these pieces here and on this here. If you hear noise, by the way, in the background, we have two things going on. First of all, my kiddos who did not wanna be on the air with me today. <laughs> They're playing outside with friends. And then our neighbors next door are getting new siding. So I don't think you can hear all those noises, but if you do, just know that it's normal. That's what happens when you do a Facebook Live. Things happen. Um, this is a pattern that I'll put on my blog so that you can see uh, a little bit better how to put the tape on those pieces. So that will be up on my blog so that you can see that. All right, let's start assembling. So then you'll grab your fingernail or we have a new tool coming out. A new tool that is called Take Your Pick. Oh, it is so cool, you guys. Um, I should grab it so I can share it with you. 
Hey, Nora's on with us. I'm peeking at comments again. I think I actually like having my um, computer in front of me so I can see the comments down here. Save those little slivers as well. <laughs> I love it, Catherine. That's true. All those little slivers might come in handy. And the corner, corner cuts for sure. These here are a must. I don't know. Seriously? Catherine, okay, I can't even pick them up. You use that? <laughs> okay, if you do, that's great. Let me get my, um, my take your pick tool. This is awesome. So this tool is coming out in our holiday catalog. And, oh good, you can see it really well. It's got this little spatula end. And that is perfect for sliding under your tear and tape, especially if you just painted your fingernails white and you have really thick polish on, you can just get right under there and lift it up right away. Is that awesome? It just digs right under. Woohoo! <laughs> I decided to do white. I was um, on the cruise ship with uh, Lisa Preto. I don't know if any of you know her, but she, she and I were in the spa at the same time. And she says she loves to paint her nails white. I've never done it. So I decided to try it and I'm, I'm liking it, especially in the summer. Oops, get under there. Um, it makes it feel so, I don't know, fresh. <laughs> All right, we've got those tape pieces up. Now we're going to lift up the middle and we're gonna grab this. This is the back of the box. This is towards the back of the box. It is an awesome tool, isn't it, Vicki Spicer? And we're gonna come in. Here, I'm gonna bend that back so you can see better. And you're gonna keep this flat and keep this angled up and then you're going to press it together making sure that this is still touching your table as you do it that way you know it's level and it presses just like that Raylene loves the tool too it is awesome do the same thing on this side make sure that this is right in that groove keep it flat on your table and press it together we did the back ones first because the front ones when they angle back like this, you won't see that seam in the front of the box when you open it up. So you can see here, it's just smooth all the way around like that. So again, we'll do the same thing to this side. So get it in that little crevice there. Make sure that it's nice and straight and swing it on back. <laughs> Thanks you guys for the sweet comments. Remember, the more you are commenting, well not the more you are commenting, but if you comment at least once, during the live broadcast, you are entered into the prize drawing. Okay, so now we got to do the top of the box. Now the top of the box, I'm going to tell you right now, you could add some extra tape beforehand, um, but I didn't do that because I wanted you to know that if you're just doing the box like this and you're not adding teeth, this amount of tape is perfect for it. You don't need any more tape than that, okay? But we're going to be adding some teeth. And we have to put that under this flap. So the first thing that we're gonna do is we're just going to um, take these pieces up one side. And again, I'm so in the habit of using my own fingernails that I forgot this awesome tool. By the way, this tool also has a little sticky end so that when you wanna pick up something like a sequin, I mean, look how cool is that? You can just pick it up and stick it onto your project. So cool. Of course that's adhesive backing so it's not gonna stick very well all right so here we go we're gonna lay this down we're gonna put the the side down that already has the tape like that and we're going to make sure that they're straight and tape that down just there and that way you can check to see that it opens okay now leave that don't touch it <laughs> set that aside for a minute grab your two inch by three and a quarter inch um, approximately it doesn't have to be that exact length it can be shorter or it can be slightly longer and I didn't have enough tape on there we'll do that later okay so we're gonna punch this now with our banner triple punch by the way I think that's a weird name I think it should be called the triple banner punch but you know what the word banner comes first in this thing so funny I find that humorous <laughs> okay you're gonna insert your paper the, the reason why they call it trip, the banner, banner triple punch is because you can actually put three different widths of cardstock in here. One inch, one and a half, and two inch. And it holds in those grooves there. So now we're gonna go ahead and push it all the way back. And if you flip it over, you can see the cardstock is all the way to the back. And we're gonna punch it down. And then we're gonna flip it around and we're gonna do the same thing to this side. Okay, all right. 
Thanks for sharing, you guys. <laughs> oh, I love that people are sharing the video. That's awesome. Thank you. Now we're going to just take a scissors and slice it in half. And I grabbed this one. But you can use paper snips, too. We do sell scissors, just not the long-handled ones. Okay, now we've got our teeth. So the teeth part we have to put in. And I'm going to actually put them in with... Um, sorry, I'm going to add some adhesive here. I'm going to put the teeth in with snail adhesive first because I might have to rearrange them. So I'll put this on here and let's tape this down again so it's held in place. Make sure it's even. Okay, now we've got that. Okay, so we're gonna put snail adhesive on the teeth and stick them up here. And I think it's best to just put the snail directly at the top of each of these pieces like that Oh, thank you, Sandy. <laughs> and now what we'll do, without having this come down onto the area that's exposed, that's sticky here, we're just gonna arrange the teeth so that you can see two teeth coming out this side and two teeth coming out this side. Now, if you wanna get real picky, I'll show you a trick with the teeth. You'll wanna take and measure, but you don't wanna flatten your box down or it's gonna stick to your table, but just measure and mark one and a quarter inches in and you can erase that little pencil mark later, that will give you an idea of where the center is. All right, so now we take our teeth, one, one set of teeth at a time, and when we stick these in here, see how I'm kind of angling them? You wanna angle them back there, and you wanna make sure that the inside edge of this tooth is beyond that pencil mark, like that. So there's the pencil mark, there's the tooth, and that way when I come in with this tooth, I'm not gonna have that overlapping gap that you can get right there, which you will see on another monster box that I made. So we're just gonna put this one, um, sorry, I'm just gonna stick that up there for a minute. Gotta advertise. <laughs> um, so then this one will do the same thing. We're gonna stick that in there like that, a little angled. That way the teeth in the middle are coming down a little bit further than the ones that are on the sides. I think the teeth are the hardest part. There we go. Okay, so we've got the teeth on there, and now we can come in here if we need to and add some more adhesive, but I think we have plenty that's going across here, so I'm not too worried about it. The only area that I'm worried about is the sides because of the teeth. Normally, you wouldn't have to put an adhesive on the sides here, but I think it's important that we put a little bit more tear and tape there. Tear it, Rachel. <laughs> there we go. I've teared, I've torn the tape. We're gonna put it right there. Don't put it right up to the edge, by the way. If you put right up to that um, scored edge, you might see some of that tape because when this flap comes down, it's sometimes not as tight and right to that edge. I'll tell you, uh, point out what I mean. Don't put it right up to this this edge here again when this come de comes down there might be a slight gap okay all right let's take that backing off and don't forget to comment you guys if you're just entering the live broadcast now if you comment you get an entry into the prize drawing at the end and i'll share what those prizes are at the end all right so now we just push this down right on top of it like that and we have our teeth ah oh, and you can make him talk <laughs> All right, so there's that part. And now to decorate, super simple. You just grab your scraps. This is a huge scrap, sorry, that's all I could find. And you're gonna grab um, your punches. And for the white of the eyes, we just need to punch out from our shimmery white cardstock, two circles that are one inch big. And then we just need to punch out from our black cardstock, two circles that are three quarters of an inch big. We're gonna use one more punch and that's our one and a half inch circle punch and we need to stamp. You don't have to stamp, but because this box is super cute without any stamping, but I wanted to introduce you to a stamp set that you can get from the holiday catalog. The holiday catalog will debut early September, I believe it's September 5th. And this one's called Takeout Treats and it coordinates and it's bundled if you wanna get a savings of 10% is bundled with the cutest little takeout box 
Um, I don't have a sample of that to share with you right now, but um, these little images here are meant to go along with that box. So now we're going to use this one. It's called, uh, this one says, this is for you, and we will stamp that onto our shimmery white scrap with some jet black stays on ink. Boy, it's getting loud now. They are really working on the siding of that house next door. Of course, I stamp it right in the middle. Don't do that. Don't do that if you're a beginning stamper. <laughs> but there, now you have a trick for getting in there. So you're just gonna go like this and punch it out. And you always use your punch upside down when you have something stamped so that you can see the um, where you're stamping. Sorry, I just, um, my computer shut off. Come on, turn back on. <laughs> oh no, <laughs> disaster strikes on a live video. Come on. Oh, this is this would be bad, you guys. If my, <laughs> it's totally off. This is crazy. We're gonna have to figure out how to work this. All right, we'll figure it out. So let's see if I can just shut the computer and start it again. <laughs> ah, not sure what happened there. Let's put this little message on the inside. You guys, I can't see your comments at all anymore. I feel like I'm just talking to outer space. Okay, so we're gonna stamp that on the inside like that. At least I can see what I'm, I have the screen up and I can see, you know, this and I can see me, but my computer has completely shut down on me. Oh, this is so sad. I might have to do the drawing afterwards. I don't wanna do that. I like to do it live and I can't see your comments <laughs> oh my goodness sakes oh well <laughs> all right so now we're gonna put these little pupils are they pupils or are they the I don't know but those are gonna go on the on the edge of the white somewhere and it doesn't matter where because these are circular so when you put them on you can really put them anywhere. You can make your eyes turn so that they're kind of cross-eyed or you know, kind of like Cookie Monster, whatever. Um, oh, and then we want to draw with our pencils. Now we have two different pencil sets now. We have the original watercolor pencil set, which you can get um, in the annual catalog. And then we have the watercolor pencil assortment too. And that is in the, um, in the special that's going on this month. And we're hoping that that watercolor assortment of pencils will go into our full selection. But now what we're gonna do is we're going to put some accent, a little bit of white accent onto the black part of the eyeballs. We'll just come in and draw like that. Flip it over, put some adhesive on the back. Seriously, you guys, this is really weird. I can't see your comments on my iPad and I can't see your comments on my computer anymore. We might, I can't get this thing to start up. It just shut down on me. Um, we might have to do the drawing afterwards. But that's okay because people that are coming on now, if you're commenting now for the first time, you're entered in. You'll, en you'll be entered in if you comment even when you say goodbye at the end. Okay, so we're going to stick that on like that and then make sure that it's evenly spaced on this side and do the same thing. Oh. Uh, It doesn't feel live anymore. It feels like I'm pre-recording this. There's our little monster gal, or guy. Oh gosh, we could leave the bow off and it could be a guy and a gal. Let's do that. Now we have a little matching, matching set here. So to do the bow though, because I know that some of you are bow challenged and I'm gonna give you a fun little tip. Maybe those of you that have watched my videos before have already seen this, but super simple. You take the length of your ribbon and I think I said eight inches. Um, so let's measure that out to eight inches. And you do rabbit ears. So you're gonna take your ribbon without any twists. We'll just take that away there so you can see more. Without any twists, you're going to just loop it like that. You have two loops in your ribbon, no twists in there, it's just folded. And you're gonna pretend like these two areas are flat, here and here. Just pretend like they're flat and you're gonna do an overhand knot with them. And there you have an instant bow. Super simple, it's, it's the rabbit ear trick, is what I call that. So there's that, you can just adjust by holding onto the middle, pulling on the legs of the, of the ribbon and tightening. And then we can take and trim it off, oops, and trim it off. 
and that can just get attached to the top with glue dots. But I, I think I'm going to keep this guy a guy and this one a girl on the inside of this box here. It's the same except this one has some fun treats in it. This one has Hershey Kisses and it has some new product that's coming out in the holiday catalog called Shimmery White, I'm sorry, Shimmer Paint, Frost White Shimmer Paint. This is awesome stuff, you guys. Can't wait. Okay, let's set that aside for just a minute because I want to bring in um, some cards. These cards I had demoed in the past um, on a Facebook Live and posted them, I think it was June 30th. I think that was the date. Anyways, this one here I demoed, I de um, and then I shared this one, which I think is my favorite because I love the Coastal Cabana colors. But then today on my blog, um, I did share two other versions and a little tip for getting that bow centered. So I just wanted to point that out for those of you who have been with me on my Facebook Lives, that th these are two other colored versions that I just shared today. I want to give you... Um, give credit to Linda Bowen. She is the one who gave me this idea for this monster box. This is a slightly smaller version. Here is the larger version. So I adjusted her measurements to make my box size. Um, this one she had as a swap on the Alaskan incentive trip that we were just on. So I got a bunch of things back from that. I was going to share them last, last uh, broadcast, but I was just so tired from the trip. <laughs> Anyways, this is her box. Thank you, Linda. Linda Bowen, and um, I just took the measurements and went with it. So that's one of the swaps I got. I got so many swaps, you guys. I just have to share a couple others. Look at this super cute pencil box. And she's got a fun little holder in here. And this was done by Sophie Pristrel, Pristrel from France. I think that's how you say her name. Um, from France. She did this super cute box. And then she's got this fun little pencil holder with rubber bands to hold the pencils in place. Um, so I got that as a swap. I got this cute little thing because I did the 3D and the card swap. So this is like a little Ghirardelli holder. Um, this was done by Renee Con Conkey. Um, thank you, Renee. So pretty. Love it, love it. And then, of course, I did the card swap too. I got 26 or 25 back of everything. So I'm not even sharing half of what I got. This card was done by Krista, um, I think, yeah. Yep, Krista Fratton. Um, so she did this fun little... I shouldn't call it fun. It's so pretty. I mean, look at that awesome card. So again, just tons of swaps that I got recently. This is the one sharing um, that stamp set that is now available uh, for a limited time. And they're also offering the watercolor pencils with it. Uh, blossoms, something blossoms. Yeah. Look on my blog for more information on that because <laughs> I forgot. <laughs> and then here is another monster box. This is the first one I made. Um, his teeth, you can see that they're connected there in the middle. They got a little bit of white showing. But I did an embossed top with one of our new embossing folders from the holiday catalog. I made a tail on him because he looked like a frog at first. And I made feet on him. And eyebrows, of course, because, you know, he had to look a little more glum. Um, but he's got some fun little treats in there. Used the less tricks, more treats saying instead because that seems, you know, more like a demand. <laughs> and he looks a little demanding. So that's my other monster guy. Um, I also wanted to point out, keep commenting by the way, I can't see their comments, but I'll read them later. Uh, I wanted to point out that I'm doing product shares from the holiday catalog. So if you are somebody that wants to get in on grabbing up a few of everything, product shares are a good way to go. So these are the Santa treat bags. We have some fun card and envelope packs in there. So that's one, um, one of the shares that you can get. We have the ribbon share, which feature, features all the new ribbons that are in the holiday catalog. Oh, by the way, this is the best way to put it on. <laughs> and this is the fun glitter. Oh my gosh, you gotta get this ribbon. If you're just getting ribbon from the catalog, that one is awesome. So um, more information on my blog, of course. Here's embellishments. This is not the way they're gonna come packaged, but I just wanted to have them all at once. This is the embellishments um, share. So if you wanted in on all those fun little doodads, then we have the special fancy papers. Um, and so there's some glimmer paper, there's galvanized paper, they call it, galvanized like a silver that's kind of matte. We have this shiny black paper, and we have this beautiful, um, it looks like chicken wire kind of stuff um, in there. So that's the fancy paper. And the last share that I'm offering is 12 by six, generous size pieces of the new papers that will be coming out 
in the holiday catalog. This is the flip side of all of those. So, wanted to share that, and also it's my birthday month. I just turned 50 a few days ago, so I am celebrating with a special this month. Um, I know that uh, a lot of you are demonstrators, so please don't please don't purchase from me if you're a demonstrator, or if you have another demonstrator, purchase from them. Um, but I wanted to uh, show you that I have a little special going on. Um, to celebrate my birthday, I have pearls. If you place a $50 order, you will get pearls as long as you apply the special host code to that order when you place it online. Um, those will ship mid-September. Or if you wanna up your order to $75 or more, then you can choose from one of our new classic pads as your free gift. So that's just to celebrate my birthday. Um, it's the month of August. So yay, 50 is not bad, I love it. Prize drawing time, except here's the problem, my computer doesn't work. So <laughs> I'm gonna have to do my little woo box, it's called woobox.com, and um, I'm gonna have to do it afterwards when I can get it up and running. It's not gonna be live drawing. But if you win, um, I will contact you and let you know. The prizes come in these Stampin' Up! little boxes that I've held on to for a while. I don't even know where I got them. But I got some pearls that were a little messed up. Um, they are just they just slid around in there. They're still good, but they didn't work too well for one of my shares that I did with the annual catalog. So um, the, each of the two winners will get a pack of pearls and a container of this striped um, it's called striped mini striped ribbon. This one is the Bermuda Bay color, and the other one is Calypso Coral, I believe. I got oh no, it's Poppy Parade. So Poppy Parade or uh, Coastal Cabana are your choices. And then I have all these sheets of adhesives that have come in past paper pumpkin kits because I am a big paper pumpkin fan. Um, and so if you win, you get to have sheets of adhesive, the ribbon, and the pearls sent to you. If you do not live in the U.S., then um, I do have to tell you that I can't send you product, but I will send you a stamped card. Because these little guys are too hard to send in the mail, um, I'm not going to be sending my stamped sample today. Sorry. All right. I think I've shared everything that I wanted to share. Um, I'm going to click over like that. There we go. <laughs> I'm so sorry that I cannot read comments. The comments were completely shut off from me. Ugh, I will go back and read them and I'll respond to any questions you have. Um, but know that if I don't, if I don't write a full comment after your comment, it's again because I'm trying to save time and time is precious, especially when my, with my kids home. And I'm going to go out and play with them right now. So thank you all for joining me. Um, make sure that you check out my blog on Saturday morning and I will share photos of these projects, these cute little monster boxes, along with measurements so that you don't have to worry about trying to memorize this all from a video. Thank you for joining me live. Love you guys. Stamp your art out. Bye. <laughs>